Good morning, we're gonna go check out a crocodile farm. Staying at Parasol Hotel for a couple of days before Sherlyn arrives so we can go around do a, like a cool road trip. But let's explore Puerto Princesa a little bit today. Maybe I should just take a very local ride today. Tricycle, how about that? Let's go to a crocodile. Yeah, no problem. Tricycle. Ah, like, uh... <laughs> it's about 25, 30 minutes. Lloyd. <laughs> Welcome to Puerto Princesa. Oh, let's go to a crocodile park. Crocodile park, white light. <laughs> But first we gotta find some shades. I don't know how I lose or break them all the time. Oh, uh, here we go. Ray-Ban. How do I look, John? Yeah. It's okay? Pila, look good? Yes. Pila, ma'am. <laughs> how much? 60. Only 60? Yes. Wow, that's a bargain. Guys, only 60 pesos. <laughs> wow, that's so cheap. So welcome to the Crocodile Farm, where the official name is Palawan Wildfire Rescue and Conservation Center. So I'm very excited to learn some about conservation and how they rescue some of the animals. But I also got a farm, no crocodile meat for sale. Uh, I only really heard stories about it before. So uh, we'll have to wait to another time to try that out. <laughs> oh, here's, a, here's one crocodile. Only 40 peso entry. Whoa, look at that. So I believe she said this is the second largest ever crocodile caught. The biggest one was uh, Lolo or something? I, I think his name is L something and uh, it's about one meter longer than this one. So the largest ever caught crocodile in the world was here in Philippines. I think it was in Agusan, the Agusan marshes maybe. I feel like such a tourist now. This is my dream bird to see in Palawan, one of them, the Palawan hornbill. And there are so many endemic species in Palawan, it's unreal. This is the uh, highest value one, the most sought after for illegal trading or trafficking, unfortunately. You even see the beautiful hills in Coron, the hills that don't have any trees, so they're kind of barren, just the grass. And it's a sad story because uh, they actually burn the hills to push these pangolins out of the hills and then they capture them from illegal trading. So these beautiful hills in Coron are actually a sad story behind it. That's how you know if you talk to the locals. So when we're done with this tour, I'm gonna ask some of the people here, the staff, to try to get a proper contact to go into the wild because that's one of my dreams here, to uh, yeah, search for these species in the jungle. Oh boy. Oh boy, what we're gonna see here. Whoa, look at that. Oh, this one is moving. This is the big one. Holy macaroni, look at the size of this one. That is a monster. So apparently this one, or the one behind me, killed a human in Rio Tuba that I've been before. Oh yeah, John. He, he get one in uh, Rio Tuba. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He already tasted human flesh. Oh. This one ate human as well, huh? So that's the uh, Philippines endemic crocodile. You can see the stripes on it. Oh, he's moving now. You see the beautiful stripes on him and he is so rare that he's critically endangered with only about 250 ones of them left in the wild, mostly in Luzon actually. Look how cute he is. So cute. <laughs> the neck first. On the neck first. The support of the belly part. Like this or this? Yeah. yeah. Under the belly. Yeah. Oh, he's so cold. Yeah. What, what's the blood temperature? It's cold-blooded animal. It is a, nice. like a like a fish. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> it's so leathery. Yeah. How are their uh, eyes? Do they have a good vision? Eyes. Yeah, like uh, they have a similar eyes to uh, cats. Yes, because they are nocturnal. Beautiful. And obviously taped over the mouth for safety. And how old is this one? <laughs> Three years. It's already three years old. Yeah, right. So they grow very slowly. Yeah. Wow. 
everybody. I'm actually not a big fan of uh, holding animals in zoos and parks, but this one, this is one way you can support the uh, conservation effort they're doing. Because uh, they, they obviously, like a lot of these conservation projects, they don't get much funding. But this is one way you can actually support them, so you pay a small amount to hold the uh, crocodile. What do we say, John? Butterfly, butterfly. Fly high, butterfly. <laughs> There's all, the reason we're saying that guys, we'll go to the butterfly farm, so we gotta fly high like a butterfly. The Palawan symbol, the peacock. The peacock. 66 Sir? feathers, 66 barangas. Nice one. See? So, you are a blogger? Yes, and I'm a good uh, okay, student go also. That's an insect that looks like a leaf. See it here. Just like a leaf. We also have a Look at the size, guys. That's a huge insect. Fly high, butterfly. Whoa! <laughs> Straight in the dark. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy moly. Probably the most interesting I did not expect. I just came for a butterfly farm and then they have this uh, beautiful trampa community and they're saying it takes about uh, 200 kilometers from here and then you have to go up the mountain for about eight hours to reach them. They speak uh, Palawan and then the tribe is called Banua, Banua tribe. You use uh, a poison for the dart? Oh, this plant, oh. this is poison. In your fire, then, then, then. So you just put it on the, uh, the top, oh. and that kills this. What's the <laughs> this is poison. Tita plant. So if you eat this, you get very sick. So, uh, so it's, it's not the leaf, it's in here. Ah, okay. They're not just here for a show or presenting their culture. They actually, they live in the mountain. They come here for about two, three, max a month, a year. And uh, then they go back up the mountain. So. Uh, and then they rotate. And when we build a house in the future, this is what I want to decorate my house inside with. Something very original tribal stuff from the Philippines. It, I mean, imagine this hanging on the wall. It's so beautiful, like the guitar. Native guitars. Fun day coming to an end, just made it to the hotel room and I forgot to mention I bought this uh, locally made Palawan delicacy I guess. It's called uh, Polvoron with cashew. So let's give it a taste test before we end it off. It's very really dry. Very really dry. Wow. Feels good. I think you're supposed to dip it in something. Wow. It's actually pretty good. If you haven't seen the Tupataha video already, my mini documentary from the most spectacular place in the Philippines, go check it out. It's unbelievable how beautiful the Philippines is. Bye, Mutak! <laughs> Today is gonna be super exciting and adventurous. Uh, what do you see this jacket? What do you guys think? Motorbike trip. So, we're gonna try to find a motorbike and then across the mountain range of Palawan to the other side of the western coast to the philippine west sea and then try to find a place to stay for the night and watch the sunset but also want to go in the mountain and find some uh, beautiful mountain race so let's go find uh, uh, a motorbike we also gotta fix this john how do we uh fix this <laughs> i have tape i have tape Very
first order of business we gotta fuel up the tank we got amazing motorbike guys helmet of course no uh, protection here but we got the some shades on should be fine this bike is amazing brand new registered uh, right in June so uh, <laughs> it's amazing bike 125 cc Honda it's way faster than my bike the Negros <laughs> Okay, so the first thing we gotta do is try to find a way out of the city. We are Puerto Princesa. Let's go, fueled up into the unknown. We have no idea where we're going, guys. Oh, it says no entry. See, this is what I'm saying? Getting out of the city. <laughs> no entry. Oh, maybe he can go. I don't understand. There's always a way, guys. We'll find. It's a beautiful day, guys. I hope there's gonna be no ulan. Pray for no ulan, guys. Wow, look at that view. One of the things I'm really excited about this trip is you see the jungle and the trees in Palo Alto. They're enormous. One of the largest regions in the country that has untouched wildlife. So we're going up a road later. I recently got cemented, I believe, so I hope that information is correct. So it's very off the beaten path what we're gonna do, guys. But I'm very excited. And the first thing we need to do, we gotta find a breakfast. Let's find a breakfast somewhere very remotely, perhaps in the mountain. Let's see. Even in this mountain range, this is next to Puerto Princesa and they can find a lot of endemic species here such as the Palawan Hornbill Amazing roads! This is the one I was talking about going up in the mountains of Napsan The greenery, the smell! Oh, it smells so good here guys! This is so interesting. We just uh, just noticed this on the side of the road and asked them if I can go check it out. Tribal Hall. Hello. Kambusta. <laughs> Very friendly people, of course. And uh, this is saying this is an ancestral people here. So this is a legit tribe that's setting up a new camp here, it seems. Magayang kadadalman. That's good, good morning. morning. Yes. Okay, one more time. Magayang kadadalman. I cannot say that. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the tribe name is Takbuana. Takbanua. Takbanua. Yes. Wow. And they have their own dialect, guys. I think I heard in uh, Red Summer that Palawan actually has uh, around 70 dialects. No, the Palawan, 70. So uh, in Pisaya, it's Mayun Puntak. The very little that I know in Pisaya, but you can just hear it's completely different. Wow. How interesting was that? Sort of indigenous people, ancestral tribe recognition in 2019, and they have their own language. Wow. Alright, up the mountain we go, we gotta buy breakfast, I'm starving. I also wanna add one thing. We we're talking about the smell before. And when you're hiking through the rainforest, there's a specific fresh, kinda chilly rainforest, watery smell of the nature. And you're getting that same smell here on the highway. So driving through this area. Mm. That says Three Angels Eco Park. Let's check it out. Drive over a river. I guess people uh, swim over here on a hot day, which is every day. 
But our first mission or second mission today was to get some food. They don't have any food except noodles, so we have to do noodles. When you're deep in the jungle, guys, it's hard to come by sometimes. Good for umbrella. Why? For umbrella. Hides from the uh, rain. Yeah. Ulan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Breakfast is served. We got beef noodle. That should give us some energy to continue to the other side, the western side of Palawan, where we're gonna try to find a proper beach so we can catch the sunset and hopefully find a place to stay tonight. Look at everything here. It's so green and massive. Hey, look at this waterfall. Let's check it out. <laughs> We're south of the jungle. Okay, I said about one minute hike. The jungle is so loud. Hey, small little cute waterfall. That's nice. And one of the amazing experiences here driving in the remote Palawan is that well, sometimes when the uh, Filipinos drive by you in front of you, they honk at you and they're all smiling. <laughs> Just like, hey! <laughs> in a, such a small community. This is crazy beautiful guys. This is Pinanglan Beach or Pinanglan Bay. Ooh. Look at that. In the Western Philippine Sea. <laughs> Birds is here. Census. It's very fine. You get maybe uh, around seven. Very nice. The water looks crystal clear here as well, but you can't see any place to You Might have to find another spot. Look how they made the uh, <laughs> the fence out of the uh, coconut tree. It's pretty cool. Off to the next beach. So I uh, got some information from uh, people here and uh, the place that I was going to go to is apparently still closed so we have to go further maybe one hour north to another place called Tak Waiyan uh, Beach and there should be some uh, accommodation there. Rock and roll, let's go! I love these small, tiny town communities. Always have a small church. There's a school actually, my big. Yeah, no problem, thank you. Yeah. We have been saved, guys. Made it to Takawan Beach. Sorry for the pronunciation. They have food. I think it's like one o'clock. We haven't eaten anything today except that uh, noodle. Thank God we did that. Wow. Humongous beach. Passed it up, I was getting a little bit sunburnt. But I'm gonna go to the next beach where there's a couple of resorts. So I think that's a slightly better chance to find a room. Uh, just with a fan, that, that's all I need. But, then there's a slight problem. We have to go inland, around this mountain range, and then we get into a beautiful cove. Off we go! Guys, 
I'm defeated. I went to like seven beaches. Uh, none of them had, uh, unfortunately, Wi-Fi because I need to communicate with Sherilyn. She's arriving in the morning. And, uh, well, no signal actually. No signal. And none of them had uh, available place to stay. Saturday, apparently. So everything is fully booked. We have to go back to town to the hotel. Some epic adventures coming up soon. We're gonna be going around uh, northern, well, central Palawan, and then to uh, some seaplane adventure. And then we can finally start to uh, do some uh, land projects and house update for you guys very soon. I need to take a nap. I'm exhausted. Take me home. You know, I always think this in my head when I'm driving on the motorbike. I thought I was giving up, but with the power of a small nap in the hammock and coffee, let's give one more pizza a try. One more. See if we can find the available room. <laughs> This sure was uh, worth the drive. Check this out, we're in Pak Pak Lawin. <laughs> How incredible is this? Much wider set here, Santos. Oh, that's a 8, 8.5 maybe. And uh, we found accommodation. So I got a small Nipa. And I also gotta find a Globe SIM card to uh, get some signal. All right, let's check it out. Nice bed. There's air conditioning. 6 p.m. I'm expecting a lot of sweet blood tasting tonight. Bed box. We'll see. <laughs> Already got like massive bites on my neck between my fingers. Ooh. You know, the cockroach bites are the worst. The cockroach. When they bite you, you get like a big swelling like here. So I think it was a cockroach bite, huge swelling. And it stays there for like maybe a week. The worst one I've ever got, when the cockroaches actually bite in between your nails, like in here under. So everything swollens out and that is painful. Very unexpected adventure coming to an end. I actually had to go back to Puerto Princesa, no signal, I tried to run new sim card, walk around the beach, try to contact Jolin, but uh, <laughs> no luck. So uh, I have to be there in the morning when she arrives from the airport. We'll come back here. It's a very short drive from Puerto Princesa, maybe about two hours, or well, one and a half hour. So uh, see you in next one. I'm going on a freaking seaplane or maybe this next one. We'll see. Peace out.